Hey, my name is Stephanie and welcome back to my channel. In past videos, I have mentioned on several occasions that going to uni in the Netherlands has been quite a different experience in comparison to going to uni in the UK and in the US. So I figured today that I finally address those key differences. I am originally from the Netherlands, I grew up there and I did my undergrad there. And I have to say that going into uni, I was quite disappointed. And obviously that had several reasons. Those were more amplified as soon as I went to the States and the UK for uni and I looked back at my experience and I was like oof <laughs> that's that's rather painful. So let's dive into what studying is actually like in the Netherlands so that you won't be surprised when you get there. So in order to go through all of this because it is a lot I created a fictional university campus map for uni that doesn't exist but does have most of the amenities as we know them from US and British campuses and I'll just go through all the little amenities and explain the like Dutch equivalent of them or whether they're actually there or not and I'll adjust the map along the way. So first of all having a campus. Well I know and I understand that not all universities in the US and the UK have a campus you know you have city unis and you have more of like a choice if that makes sense you're applying to uni you can choose whether you want to go to like a huge campus uni or whether you want to be in the city like effectively like NYU right. In the Netherlands however you don't really have that option it's just all non-campus unis apart from one if I'm not mistaken that actually has more of like a uni campus but most most of our unis are old historical unis in the major cities and they're spread throughout the entire city. So my uni, the Uni of Amsterdam, had about like six major locations and they were very far apart. For example, um, I think the farthest to apart were more than 45 minutes apart or something ridiculous like that. So effectively the city will be your campus which you share with loads of other non-students so you don't really have like campus boundaries if that makes sense. But yeah, number two, halls of residence or dorms. These simply just do not exist. Most students go out by themselves in the city, have to find a private rented room in a house, do a flat share, something like that. Some students still live with their parents because it's quite expensive to find something to rent privately. And on the other hand, it's quite convenient to live with your parents because you get free food. There is one catch though. If you're doing Amsterdam University College, which is a degree, it's, it's very weird. Either way, if you do that, you are able to win a lottery type thing where you get a whole room or something like that. But that's like a fraction, a tiny, tiny fraction of the Dutch student body that actually lives in university owned housing. It's just not a, it's not a thing. People don't live on campus or near their uni buildings. People often have to cycle about an hour to get to their uni buildings, specifically in Amsterdam, because it is quite expensive to live in the city center. And some of the buildings are in the city center. House arrest residents unfortunately don't have those. So number three, as you can see I've dotted around some red boxes, those 3% bus stops, because you would think that if the campus is so spread out that the uni needs to have some form of transportation for the students to get from A to B, um, well unfortunately no, we, we don't we don't have that. You have to get yourself from A to B. And sometimes that does lead to some interesting situations because at one point my lecture finished and I had about a 10 minute gap to get to my next lecture, but the next building was about 30 minutes away. So I never was able to make it on time. I still don't know how to end up on my schedule, but sometimes you end up with those situations. So number four. So in the US and in the UK, you'll find that most unis will have sports fields available to them. I do suppose that having a stadium is slightly more American, but yeah all in all like uni or college sports. So the Netherlands doesn't really have sports teams representing the university in like inter-university matches. We don't have those. So we don't have a thing like a hockey team or a basketball team or like a swimming team or a uni whatever team. We just don't have that. It doesn't exist. So in Amsterdam we used to have one sports centre and it was an indoor sports centre that we would share with two other universities in Amsterdam. So they have access to that as well. So you would bump into students there if you signed up for like a club sports Board, and they would host competitions against other clubs but they weren't like necessarily other student clubs it very much depended on a sport if you picked one but it's very much like as a kid you know you went to like a club sport that's very much the vibe so yeah yes to the sports hall no to the sports fields and definitely a hard no to the stadium so number five student services and mail rooms as we don't have halls of residence or dorms we don't require mail rooms so we don't have a mail room or like a postal office on site that's not a thing at all 
terms of student services, if I had trouble with my like uni card, I would go to the reception desk at my faculty to sort that out. So we also didn't really have like a student services type building where you could go with like a problem. If I had like an academic register type problem, I'd first go to my faculty. Or if I really couldn't figure out, I'd like fill out a form for like an online help desk type thing. And they had a physical space, but that was more with the offices, if that makes sense. So there was not like a whole sort of dedicated space for like student services. So no to that building either. So number six. And as you can see, there's a couple of blue phones around. This is very much US thing. I don't remember seeing this in the UK, but I might be wrong about that. So if you are in trouble on campus, you can walk over to these one of these like phones and you can ring campus security. And people tend to do this when they feel unsafe, when something is happening or anything along those lines, you can ring campus security. We don't have this. This is not a thing. Seven. The blue phones go hand in hand with my next point, which is campus security. Again, it doesn't exist. So even if you would have blue phones, you would have nowhere to ring. Effectively, we don't have campus police or campus security. We don't have them driving around in cars around campus. Like I've seen them driving around Oxford. I've seen them driving around in the US. I've never seen anything like that in Amsterdam whatsoever. Obviously, the larger buildings have some like security personnel downstairs who monitor like cameras, that type of thing. But there is not like a real sort of campus police or campus security that you can reach out to if you don't feel safe walking at night across campus or alongside the uni buildings in this case. It's just, it just doesn't exist. Eight, the dining halls. As we don't have halls of residence, we don't really need dining halls because people don't have dinner at uni. At least people don't tend to have dinner in uni. So effectively what happens is that if I want to have some food at uni, I either walk to the grocery store around the corner and get a sandwich from there. Or if I want to stay inside of the building, most buildings do have a little cafe where you can get a cup of coffee and a sandwich. They are quite expensive. I remember back in 2018, 2019, they were about like four euros plus for a sandwich and like three euros plus for a coffee. You could also get like cheap coffee from the machine for like 50p, but that was quite bad coffee. It was like actively, I can, I can, I have a high tolerance for like bad coffee, but this was like actively bad. But yeah, it was also 50p and it was a lot cheaper than the three euros for like other machine coffee. It wasn't even like made coffee by, by a barista. It was the fancier machine coffee. And these cafes would close at around like 4 p.m. ish. So there is no way that you can get dinner from these places. And I also don't remember ever having dinner in uni. I just don't think I ever managed to do that in any way, shape or form. Number nine, the bookstore. We don't have those either. <laughs> it's not going well with this map. So without uni sports, without a campus, without halls of residence, you very much create an environment which is very much lacking school spirit, which is one of the things that I found really, really disappointing when I went to uni because I expected everybody to be like, oh yeah, go University of Amsterdam, it's going to be amazing. And it was just absolutely not the case. Like nothing like that at all. So when you don't have school spirit, you don't require like printed hoodies with the school on it or mugs. I really tried my best. I have one mug that says the University of Amsterdam on it. That's all the merch that I own from the University of Amsterdam. I have seen though, because I walked past one of the uni buildings and I saw that they had a pop-up store. So hopefully that is still there because otherwise there is literally no possibility of buying merch whatsoever. At least while I was there, no one had merch. Also, no one would walk around wearing things like that. I had never seen anything like sweatshirts from other unis as well. Well, so it's just not a thing. In terms of our books, without having a bookstore, my faculty had a deal with a local bookshop. So I would that I would go there to buy my books. And that meant that I had to buy them brand new. Because this bookstore did not rent out books, they didn't sell secondhand books. So I just had to stick with the new books. And obviously I can go by myself on Amazon and try and find secondhand books or go into a secondhand bookshop or anything along those lines. But effectively, the one place that my uni sort of sends me too is just brand new books. Number 10. Having a nurse on site is probably quite American. Like I don't remember seeing that in the UK. Might be wrong about that, but I have not noticed that. But having a well-being service where people could go for counseling if they have mental health issues, I have seen in both the US and the UK. However, I have never seen that in the Netherlands. I might just not have seen it. It could be one of those things, but I'm pretty sure they just don't have it. The best you could do was to go talk to your 
your academic advisor that was about the extent of it. If there was anything beyond that, you would be sent off to your GP. So number 11, but the rec center or the student union, the place where you can sign up for like societies, clubs, anything from like the rock climbing society to the Taylor Swift Appreciation Society. However, we don't have this. We don't have uni clubs in uni. At least not things like this. Like we don't have, there's like a little bit of like a politics type thing. But apart from that, there is literally nothing. There are no Taylor Swift Appreciation Societies. There is no Quidditch Society. There is nothing, nothing like this. The only way to like join a social org is to go outside of the uni and join one of the like societies outside of uni. But that's quite complicated if you're not a native Dutch speaker because all the people who join are Dutch. I've never seen an international join one of those things. So it might be possible, but it's very much a Dutch thing. So effectively, if you're an international student, there is no social clubs, which is really sad. So 12, a chapel or a prayer room. I don't think that Dutch unis own churches or chapels. They certainly don't have chapels. They might actually own a church if it's like a historical site that they used to own and therefore still have, but not really run as affiliated with the university. I'm pretty sure it might be something like that that gets like run separately, but maybe still has the uni stamp on it, something along those lines. But definitely like religion is not really a thing in uni at all. I also don't remember ever seeing a prayer room. I hope that they do have those now. I might just not have noticed them. And also since they have opened new buildings, so I hope those include prayer rooms. But I certainly, my main building that I used to go for uni, there definitely wasn't one when I was there. 13, green spaces. As we are not a campus, we just don't have green spaces. It's just we're in central Amsterdam. There's obviously some locations that are a bit further out and they have like a field or whatever, but it's not like people sit down on it and have a picnic, if that makes sense. People don't chill on that as much. Like sometimes something might be getting organized there type thing. But in general, we just don't have green spaces. Any of the buildings where I had lectures or seminars or modules or anything along those lines, none of them had green spaces. So for so not having a campus, not having green spaces also equals not having a main gate. So we don't really have like a main sign that has the uni name on it or something along those lines. That just doesn't exist either. So yeah, then we end up with what's left. So there we have the uni offices, which has like admissions in it and effectively like the people who keep the uni going. Uh, the sports hall that I talked about. We have academic buildings such as faculty buildings, because obviously we still need to study that. As well it's a university and then of course the lecture halls so often larger lectures will take place in like bigger lecture halls because they don't fit in the historical buildings that are owned by the university so those tend to be a bit further out same with like exam halls and that sort of thing they tend to be quite quite far away a library yeah obviously we need a library where students you need a place to study there was one main library in Amsterdam and several faculty buildings also will have different libraries that are more catered towards the specific faculty that they're in okay cafe. So like I said earlier, most buildings, most faculty buildings will have a form of a cafe in it. They tend to be the bigger buildings that have one central sort of cafe where you can grab a coffee and a sandwich. It's quite expensive, but they do exist. They close at around four. That's it. You can get your brownie or your sandwich and your coffee. Museum. So my uni has one museum where they have archaeological finds in it. And so yeah, that actually we do have. And then we have the orange bits on the maps. Those are historical sites and buildings I just made something up a square in a circle but effectively we have plenty of those because we're in Amsterdam in historical buildings so we have loads of interesting landmarks but yeah that's it so when you take out all the fun of uni you're left with this map and that was a bit disappointing to me because I expected it to be way much more like the American movies that I used to watch when I was a teenager and it definitely didn't turn out that way and I was quite sad about that actually but either way I had a great time I went out and really took it upon myself to find friends, to find fun, to organize fun things, to do fun things. But it was something that really was driven by myself to go out and actively seek for those things. It was not something that the university sort of automatically provides for you. While that is the case in the UK and the US, I could definitely see this being really difficult if you're not a Dutch speaking person, because it's that much harder to take that step. And also loads of these social places only limit to people who actually speak Dutch for the vibe 
which is a bit unfair, but it does happen. So yeah, be prepared going into the University of Amsterdam or any other Dutch uni as a non-native Dutch speaker. Uh, beware of the fact that the uni will not provide you with any support whatsoever in terms of housing, socializing and, and mental health, which is really sad. And I wouldn't say don't go study in the Netherlands because price-wise, I suppose it's a good deal, especially for other European students who are still coming from within the European Union, even for UK students, I don't think it's that ridiculously expensive to go to the Netherlands, but just be prepared on what to expect once you get there and have sort of a plan to survive and navigate this whole thing because it's very, very different from the US and the UK. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this wasn't too long and I hope it was helpful and see you in a next one. Bye.